Hi, welcome to another Playmaker third person tutorial with Miroi Fozi. In this video, we are going to continue our third person Playmaker. And I know it's been a while since I posted the video. Uh, it's been a busy year so far. And now I managed to have more time to play around with Playmaker. And in this episode, I want to explain how to switch the legacy input control to use the new input system. Because the new input system is very versatile, uh, we can add a options to rebind a uh, key and I will also explain the rebinding features in the next video. So right now in this video we need to convert everything uh, regarding our input system to the new one. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the window here and open the package manager and here in the package make sure it's Unity registry selected and then we want to scroll down until we find the input system and just select the version that is tagged as release and this should be stable enough to be used so here uh, let's just install this uh, where is the install button yeah I need to press ref refresh for some reason and then it shows me the install button so now I have this install button I'm going to press install and this should install the package needed to use the new input system okay so now we have imported the input system it is finished importing and compiling everything the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we switch the input system in our player settings so we can go to the build settings and then player settings here and if we scroll down under the other settings we should be able to find the active input handling so we want to change this to the new one here and then we want to press apply this will restart the editor and it will reopen the editor automatically once it is open we will have the new input system active in our project okay so now we have restarted the editor here if we go to the player game object and then open the playmaker window you see that uh, the states the action the get access vector actions will complain that this action is not supported anymore so now we can just disable this and minimize this and the next thing that we want to do is we want to create an input actions to map our control like the movement the jump and the act the attack action so here in the third person controller folder I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this input system and inside this folder I'm going to create a new input actions here under the terrain layer we should have the input actions options now and I'm going to call this control map now that we have created this input actions we need to edit the asset so let's just press the button and it will open this window here and i'm going to create a new action map and this is going to be the gameplay so action maps is going to be like the base action reference that we can use whenever we are we want to get some vector value from an input or a button value and we can create multiple action maps like for the gameplay for example and we want to add another action maps for the ui control and later we can enable and disable the action maps depending on the state of the game so for example if you are in the game then you want to enable probably the gameplay action maps and if you are inside the ui or the post menu and you are accessing the menu for example then you want to disable the gameplay action maps and you want to enable the ui action maps so uh, that is basically the gist for this action maps uh, maybe there is more to it but so far this is what i understand regarding the action map so here in the gameplay action map i'm going to i'm going to delete this one here and i'm going to add a new actions and for this new action i'm going to change this to value and for the control type i'm going to change this to any for now and here i'm going to add a up down left right composite here I'm going to delete the first binding because we are not going to use this and for the new actions I'm going to double click it and I'm going to rename this to move and for the first 2D vector I'm going to rename this to keyboard and now I'm going to bind this to the keyboard the W the A for the down a, S for the down and for the left set this to A and so forth so now we have the WSAD for the controller and then uh, for the move I'm going to add another up down left right composite 
and this is for the game path and here we can bind this to the game path I'm going to press my game path here and it detects the left stick up here and I'm going to change all of the other here okay so now I'm done with the movement here the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a new actions and I'm going to call this jump and for jump we want to leave this as button for the action type for the binding uh, we can just pick and listen and for the keyboard I'm going to press space I'm going to add another binding and this is going to be the gamepad and I'm going to pick this button east which is the right button out of the fourth button the X W B and A which is going to be the B button on the Xbox controller and then I want to add another actions and this is going to be the attack and for the attack I'm going to listen for the keyboard I'm going to pick left control for the keyboard and add another binding and this is going to be the button X on the Xbox controller or button West and I'm going to save this assets here Okay, so now we are done with the input actions. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go to the playmaker and then we want to replace this get access vector. Now in playmaker, we have this player input category and this is going to be the actions for all of the new input system related actions. And for the get access vector, we can replace this with the get move vector. So I'm going to pick this action and here I'm going to put this below the axis the get access vector here as you can see we have this warning the game object requires input system player input components so we can just click and this will get added to the player and for the player we want to add the input actions assets here so I'm going to pick the control map that we've just created and we want to use the default map gameplay for this and here for the player input get move vector actions now we need to pass a reference an input actions reference and for this one we can zoom this out here and we want to pick the gameplay move the action map that we've created and the actions that we've created for moving which is the move so we can want uh, we want to use that and we want to map this to the x z plane and for the relative to we want to drag the main camera so let's just drag the main camera and for the multiplayer i'm going to make this the same as the previous multiplier which is 3 so let's just set this to 3 and for the magnitude we want to store this to the move magnitude and we want to store the move vector to the movement vector here similar to the get access vector here so now we can just delete this action and this should fix or make the player movable again using the keyboard or the gamepad there is another thing that we need to change here First, we need to change the camera here. And uh, if we play this, uh, the, the camera will complain because the camera will not be able to detect the mouse movement since we are switching to the new input system. So here, if we go to the Cinemachin virtual camera here, the Cinemachin free look component here, here it says that the input system package is installed, but it is not used to control this virtual camera so we want to press this add input provider and here you see that it adds this component and it's used the default player look action reference and this is coming from the input actions or input system package that we've import i'm going to leave this for now and this player look input actions reference already have informations for the mouse movement as well the right stick on the gamepad so by using this we can rotate the camera using mouse or the right stick gamepad right away but you can use your own action reference if you want to you just need to set up those in the control map input action okay so uh, now we have set up the camera the next thing that i want to change is the jump fsm here here it will complain with this old action so the next thing that we want to use is the player input perform event so I'm going to add this. I'm going to put this below the get button actions and we can disable the button action. And basically we want to pick the gameplay jump action reference and we want to send to the jump event. So we can just remove the old get button down action 
and the next thing that we want to add is the attack here we want to add a new player input perform event and then let's just put this below the get button down action and for the input actions reference we want to pick the gameplay attack so let's just send the attack event here and delete the old action okay so we have a couple of issue here and let's just copy this action and we want to I'm going to highlight this action and then paste it here and remove the actions and here I'm going to also select this actions paste the new one and delete the old action there so let's just save the scene here and now we can test this out so I'm going to use the mouse and the keyboard to test this now and as you can see here I can move around with the W S A and D and then I can attack with the left control I can jump with the spacebar and I can move around with the mouse I can like I can rotate the camera and now I'm going to use my gamepad and this time I'm using my gamepad and here I can move with the left stick and I can rotate the camera with the right stick and the right stick is coming from those default action reference from the package system that we add to the Cinemation free loop component and we can jump using the east button and I can attack using the X button there's one thing I forgot here the player have this pickup mechanism and I haven't updated the old get button action so we need to fix this in order to fix this first we need to go to the third person controller input system and I'm going to open the control map here yeah and then I'm going to add a new actions and I'm going to type this call this pickup and for the binding I'm going to listen for the left shift for the keyboard and I'm going to add a new binding for the gamepad and I'm going to use the A button or button south and I'm going to save the asset now it is saved we can select the player game object go to playmaker tab here and I'm going to first for the first get button down I'm going to replace this one with the player input uh, triggered event because with the triggered event we can start the trigger or the press value as a boolean here so I'm going to use this and this is only called once not every frame while we are pressing so I'm going to put this above the conditional expression and I'm going to pick the gameplay slash pickup reference and I'm going to store the value to this pickup button press boolean variable here now we can just remove this old action and then on the other state here the parent pick object we have this exclamation mark it means that we have an error so if I scroll down we have this get button down I'm going to use the perform event this time and then I'm going to pick the gameplay pick up reference and I'm going to send a throw event just like what we did here in the previous action so I'm going to send that event remove the old legacy actions and save the scene here uh, now we can try the pick up mechanics using this new input system so here I'm going to try to pick the barrel I'm using gamepad right now I'm pressing the A button yeah it works and then if I press the A button again it throws the barrel okay so that is basically how we set up the new input system and one thing that you will notice here if I jump you will notice the jitter on the background there on the ground on the edge of the ground and the box there so in order to fix that, uh, we can go to our Cinemachine free look component here. Uh, sorry, not that one. Uh, under the main camera here, we want to change the update method to fix update and the blame update method to fix update as well. Because our player, our character is using rigid body and it's moving inside the fix update. So we want to synchronize that. I'm going to save the scene here. And now let's test this again. And now if I jump for example here oops uh, it is much smoother I don't see the jitter anymore on the background there 
Okay, so yeah, that is basically how you set up a new input system. And in the next video, I'm going to explain you how to create the rebinding actions. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to press the bell button to get notified for new Unity tutorials as well as Playmaker tutorials.